Welcome, everyone, to We the Geeks, a White House series of Google Plus Hangouts where we explore the future of science, technology, and innovation here in the United States. My name is Doug Rand. I'm the Assistant Director for Entrepreneurship here at the White House in the Office of Science and Technology Policy. Uh, and uh, we're here today because the President has declared November National Entrepreneurship Month, and today is National Entrepreneurs Day. It's also Global Entrepreneurship Week for young people all over the world, so there's really no better time than today for the theme of We the Geeks Student Startups. That's why we're having a conversation with some extraordinary entrepreneurs who launched companies while they were still completing high school, college, and grad school. And plus, we have two uh, seasoned entrepreneurs from the TV show Shark Tank, which we're very excited to have. So I am here uh, at the White House uh, with the five finalists of the National Youth Entrepreneurship Challenge, all high school students, who just met with President Obama earlier today. Uh, the president has repeatedly emphasized that startups play a huge role in generating job creation and innovation across every part of the country, and that entrepreneurs are going to help solve the grand challenges we all face together in the 21st century. That's why he launched the White House Startup America initiative, which is a call to action for everyone, inside and outside of government, to celebrate, inspire, and accelerate entrepreneurship. You can join our conversation today uh, and ask a question uh, of any of the startup uh, uh, moguls you hear, you see here today by sending a tweet with the hashtag WeTheGeeks uh, on Twitter or on Google+. Again, send us a question uh, uh, with the hashtag WeTheGeeks, and uh, we'll be checking throughout, uh, throughout our time together. So with that, let's get started. Uh, even though we will not be doing any deals in the next hour, uh, you all know how to make an elevator pitch, so I want you to give us what you've got in under 60 seconds, who you are, where you're from, and uh, what your company does. So we're going to start with Jesus and Tohib. Soccer, the most popular sport in the world. If you're a soccer player, you know how frustrating it gets when your shin guard moves out of place while you're playing, leaving your shin bone, the most common fracture long bone in your body, unprotected. It's unsafe, plus it's just plain annoying. Well, worry no more, because with our new product, you provide the perfect solution. Here you have soccer straps, soccer sleeves that are meant to solve this problem. However, they sometimes fail, and that's where our product comes in. Our product will increase shin guard stability. It is a soccer sock with a pocket for a shin guard. It will reduce side to side motion, which will increase protection. I'm Tohibo Kenla. And I'm Jesus Fernandez. And, and we, we are TJ Soccer. Nicely done. Okay. All right, next up, Jenny. Hi, I'm Jenny Corbin, co founder of TNG Pharmaceuticals and entrepreneur in residence for Tasman Industries and Tasman Leather Group two companies involved in agriculture and in Louisville, Kentucky. Starting out of school, I devoted my career to the advancement of the agricultural industry. The best way to do that is through entrepreneurship. Advancing my knowledge through an MBA, I was able to propel my career to a whole new level, thanks to the University of Louisville's entrepreneurship community. Because I pursued my passion for agriculture and entrepreneurship, I am able to have my dream job. Not enough applause and focus is portrayed to our American farmers, and they are the very reason we can all thrive today. So I have devoted my time to creating American-made, American-born products through entrepreneurship in agriculture. Thank you, Jenny. Next up is Dagum. Hello. Did you know that 74% of sports fans follow and discuss sports on either Twitter or Facebook? And that 21.4 million tweets were sent during the last Super Bowl? In this day and age, sports fans are always on the web. My site offers young sports fans a place for them to get the latest sports news. My name is Dagan Gurman. I'm the proud owner of The Audible. The Audible is a social media site geared towards young sports fans. It has been active for about six months as of right now at audible.net with over 6,000 visitors per month and 500 registered users. We have a team of 50 featured writers, and we post articles on professional sports, and we just launched the high school sports section. You have the ability to come onto the site and write opinions, write articles about your favorite sports, and engage with other users your age. And we have a, we have developed an active mobile app on Android and iOS software. So everyone join the movement, join the Audible, the Audible.net. Thank you. Excellent. Next up is Yolite. Hi, uh, my name is Yolite Tamanaha. I'm a co-founder at Farmplicity, which is an online marketplace where farmers sell their products directly to chefs. Um, we launched in April in St. Louis, and basically the farmers create listings for the products they've grown, and then chefs can log on and buy directly from farmers within 150 miles of their restaurant. 
And our goal is to make it really easy to order locally so that it can have a place in our normal food distribution system. Great. Spencer? Hi, my name is Spencer Quinn, and I'm one of the co-founders of FiberFix. FiberFix is the world's strongest repair wrap. Um, leaky pipe? Just FiberFix it. Broken radiator hose? FiberFix it. All you have to do is dip this tape in water, it activates the specialized resin that's in the tape, and then after five to ten minutes, this tape gets really hard like steel, and you have a permanent, long-lasting repair. Excellent. All right, next up is Junie. Hi, my name is Junie Nguyen. I'm from the San Leandro, which is in the San Francisco Bay Area. <clears throat> and my business is Nexcessories. What Nexcessories is, it's a step-on tie that you can easily put on in the back whenever you have to change. If you spill your... Um, Anything on your tie or if you get it messed up, you can just easily snap it and change. Actually, you can easily do it right now, and I can just snap it off and put it back on and adjust it like a normal tie. That is definitely something I need. Okay, next up is Jared. Hello, everyone. It is my pleasure and an honor to be here with you today. My name is Jared Karp. I am a fourth-year mechanical engineering student at UC Berkeley. I founded the Design Engineering Collaborative, which serves as a launch pad for ideas and creativity for students outside of the everyday classroom environment. I also co-founded a company called Betaversity, which uh, designs and delivers innovation spaces and ecosystems to college campuses across the country. I am a University Innovation Fellow through Stanford's Epicenter Program and the National Collegiate Inventors and Innovators Alliance, and it is my mission to unlock the innovative and entrepreneurial potential of the wide resource pool that is um, college youth across America. Thank you, Jared. And now we have Aaliyah. Hi, my name is Aaliyah Wilson. I am 17 years old from St. Louis, Missouri. My business is Kool-Aid Crutchware. It's a create-it-yourself shopping experience where you're able to custom design your very own crutch accessories online that will provide you with confidence, self-expression, and creativity. Three things that makes my business unique is that we are the only company that you're able to custom design your crutch accessories. 5% of every purchase will go to a charity of your choice. And all of our products are eco-friendly. You can visit us at kooladecrutchware.com. Thank you. Thank you, Aaliyah. So now that we've met all of our student entrepreneurs, uh, let's, uh, let's go to Barbara Corcoran. So, of course, I built my business in a customer industry called real estate brokerage. And I did it in the best town in the world, in my opinion, New York City. And I sold that business 11 years ago, and now in the last five years, I've been investing in small young businesses on Shark Tank. And it is a blast, because we have that fabulous show on ABC. We meet every kind of business pitch in the world, and we get to be the lucky investors to invest and sometimes lose our money and sometimes make our money. Thank That's you. my friend. Damon. Yeah, I'm Damon John, and I was... Uh... I was born and raised in Queens, uh, New York City, and I created a clothing line called FUBU at the age of 20 years old. Um, FUBU really became popular and became a global brand, and after that I went out and acquired other brands. And after the last five years, I've also been on Shark Tank along with Barbara and, and four other great sharks that I constantly, constantly learn from. I make jokes about them, but I learn from them. But more importantly we get to work with such amazing young talent and as uh, we're growing older as sharks and business people and entrepreneurs there's a lot of uh, uh, new ideas concepts and ways to deliver you know your product and your ideas to market and I think I learn from uh, the sharks as well as the entrepreneurs so I think I'm the most fortunate person in the tank. Fantastic so Barbara and David you hear a lot of pitches both on the air and I'm sure ten times as many off the air. Uh, we just heard from some amazing uh, high school students, college students, and grad students. We heard their pitches. Do you have any uh, any immediate questions uh, that arose about any of their business models that you want to ask them right I now? I have comment. I think your high school kids did the best pitches. They were short, sweet, to the point, clear, and crystal enthusiastic. What could be better than that? Your other guys were good, but these guys should be given a special prize. All right, you heard it. <laughs> I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to echo that. Uh, you know, uh, some of the other the the more sophisticated individuals in the pitches were pitching about uh, what they love about the product itself and their uh, agenda on the product. But more importantly, when you pitch, your energy has to be: What are you pitching? for the person you're pitching to? Why will we get excited about it? If you're excited about it, it's great. But what's in it for us? Absolutely. So I have a question for Aaliyah. Uh, 
and that is, you know, you you uh, entered this National Youth Entrepreneurship Challenge uh, and, uh, as part of the Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship at your school. Um, but you know, you're still finishing high school. You're college bound. Uh, you're juggling doing your business and uh, and completing high school and preparing for college all at once. Um, how did learning to be an entrepreneur? How did those skills relate to your high school studies and your ambitions for college? Okay, that's an excellent question. Well, one, I would say that having my own business has helped me with being able to talk to people about really anything. It helps me with all of my, I guess you could say, leadership uh, skills or public speaking skills. So probably before I actually started my own business and I presented in front of a hundred people, I wouldn't be comfortable doing this, talking to you and like, answering a simple question. But um, now that I have my business, I am more comfortable with talking casually to anyone about answering a question or about my business or anything that I'm knowledgeable about. That's helped me in one major way. And I've also been able to be a little bit more knowledgeable about being an entrepreneur. Um, and Nifty's also helped me with uh, meeting other young entrepreneurs like myself. And it's really encouraging once you meet other people that are like yourself. It's, it's really helpful. That's excellent. So, Jared, I have a question for you. Moving to the uh, to the college level, uh, you've kind of made it your mission, as you said before, to build a culture of entrepreneurship across campus. How are you and these other university innovation fellows doing that, uh, and how can other people get involved? That's a great question. Um, one of the main things that we do is put on events and build an ecosystem uh, framework within p which people can innovate. Uh, we do whatever we can to reach as many students as possible, uh, whether that is drawing in uh, good contacts from industry to give inspirational talks, uh, followed by some fun, say, design thinking event that gets people's creative juices flowing. Um, we post things online. We have a fantastic online resource called universityinnovation.org, which is a go-to place for students to find out all of the information about what's available on their campus um, as far as uh, innovation, entrepreneurship resources go. Um, so we really just want to get the word out to as many people, which can be challenging in both large schools and small schools, and breaking down the silos between departments uh, nationwide. Jared, if you were naming one thing, what's the most effective thing that's made the biggest difference in individual entrepreneurs' lives? You name four or five things. What's the single best hit there? The single best resource for um, inspiring entrepreneurs at the college level is compiling the resources that are available to them in a way that they can understand and access very easily. Clear. Great. And what's the website again? The website is universityinnovation.org. Excellent. Um, so now I want to I want to hear uh, from the grad school level too. We have Jenny back online. Uh, and uh, and you started your company, if I'm not mistaken, while you were in graduate school, uh, and uh, and you did something that we're certainly very interested in here uh, here at the White House, which is you you took uh, a new technology from just a you know lab-based research project all the way uh, to something that can be out in the marketplace making a difference in people's lives. So can can you tell us the story of how you found that technology and and also why horn flies are a big deal? Sure. Yeah, the, um, while at the University of Louisville, we'll, we are taught a systematic approach to starting a business. And uh, one of the criteria is to look for something that you uh, have a fit for, FIT. And uh, my fit is in agriculture and um, the farming industry. So I actually went to different ag-based schools, offices of technology transfer, and looked for products that they were looking to license. From that uh, simple tool of using Google, I was able to find a product that Auburn University had to license. And because of my background in ag and my relationship in grad school and with U of L, we were able to license the technology. Uh, we got our seed funding to actually start this business because we were uh, lucky to win the um, largest and most lucrative business plan competition on the graduate business plan competition circuit. And then we won the um, global championship 
from there we received almost about a million in in-kind award and uh, convertible notes. So upon graduation, we were able to uh, receive the awards and the money and actually start the company. And we're still still running it today and hope to have a product to the market in three years. And I'm knocking on wood. Um, it's a USDA process. Uh, it is a vaccine for cattle that targets the horn fly. And the horn fly is the number one pest facing cattle farmers or facing cattle. It causes about a billion dollars in North America only uh, alone. Uh, it's many, many billions of dollars globally. It's an um, e epidemic throughout the world. So our product is, I know you hear this a lot, but it truly is uh, one of a kind, nothing else like it on the market. Um, and knock on wood again, we hope to be out in the market in three years. Jenny, who is we? You had a team that you developed this with at the graduate level? Yes, uh, at U of L, at University of Louisville, they put us together, myself and uh, three other guys, uh, cohorts of mine. Uh, we were put together based on each other's strengths and weaknesses. Uh, and from that, we were able to build the business. Great when, lesson on that, right there. Have it would. We took it from um, academic is a lot different from real world. So once we went into an academic setting, the uh, formation of the company changed a little bit. We actually uh, now have a new CEO, but someone that's uh, been there, done it, um, a gray hair as we call him, a seasoned professional in this realm, and he is uh, running the company now, and I couldn't be happier. That's excellent. And uh, I just want to say again to everyone who's watching out there uh, online, you can send your own question to any of these entrepreneurs you're hearing from or any of the uh, any of these seasoned sharks we have as well. Uh, just send a tweet to hashtag WeTheGeeks at any point. Um, so I want to go now to uh, Yolite and Spencer, who are joining us live from the Global Student Entrepreneurship Awards. You're both undergraduates, uh, and yet here you are uh, competing uh, you know, for a Global Entrepreneurship Award. You both have startups that are in market right now. Um, I want to ask both of you, how, how are you juggling this? Uh, do you have any advice for other undergraduates who are ambitious both in their uh, scholarly lives and uh, in their uh, startup lives? Okay. Um, yeah, I think you know my advice would be to go for it and then worry about juggling later. I think a lot of people underestimate themselves and they think that it, you can't do it and there's all these problems. But if you just take the first few steps and then you'll figure out what the next steps are after that and before you know it, you have a company and you're not failing school. So it's all good. Yeah, and in, in my opinion, I, I think entrepreneurs can relate with this. Um, there's a saying that uh, one of my mentors always told me. He said, successful people are successful only because they're willing to do what unsuccessful people are not willing to do. That's really what it comes down to. And that usually means making sacrifices. And so you're going to have to make the list of the things that have to get done in that day and get them done. Don't leave, don't leave your desk or don't leave the customer you're working with to tell you <laughs> get what you need to get done done and then just make sure you through this whole time, actually. You know what I, I think one of the most it. underestimated traits in every great entrepreneur I've ever met, and I never hear it talked about, is a sense of urgency. I've never met a great entrepreneur who didn't have an intense sense of urgency to get everything done. And that's what we just heard from right there. Urgency and urgency, side by side. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Dagam, I wanted to give you an opportunity on behalf of the uh, other high school students we have here today. You guys just met President Obama just a couple of hours ago. Uh, what was that like? Well, unbelievable. This tip, something we're always going to remember. Um, it was just amazing what he told us. And to meet a leader like that who's such, such an inspiration to everyone in this country, everyone in the world. Uh, he gave us great advice about entrepreneurship, that you have to overcome all those obstacles, and that entrepreneurship is going to be hard, but the great entrepreneurs are the ones that strive and uh, accomplish what they want. You knew that anyway, right? Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, Tahib, I, I was really interested in reading about your story. Uh, you know, before you founded this company, before you started high school, you you came to this country when you were a pretty pretty small child, right? Uh, you and your family uh, uh, came here as immigrants, and uh, you know it's pretty astonishing when you, when you look at the statistics. Uh, an overwhelming number of the companies that are now in the Fortune 500 were started by immigrants or the children of immigrants. Uh, immigrants have started one out of every four high growth startups in this country. Um, so obviously, uh, you know, there's lots of successful entrepreneurs with lots of different backgrounds, but there's something about being an immigrant that seems to uh, seems to uh, really make a difference. And so, how, how has your immigrant experience informed uh, uh, your journey as an entrepreneur? Um, yeah, good question. Uh, I think speaking for myself and also um, for you know in immigrants like myself, I think being an immigrant and you know migrating from a different country, you came here for a purpose, uh, which is to seek, to have and to use, you know, the opportunities that are here. And being, you know, an immigrant, it only makes you that much more hungry, basically, in language terms. Like, you're hungry. Like, when you're in school, you're hungrier than, you know, the people that are, you know, you know, used to the system already. And you're hungrier, you know, even though you come at a disadvantage, like, you're hungrier to know more. And that hunger really is what entrepreneurship is. You have to consume and, you know, that's what you know. Great entrepreneurs that you mentioned are immigrants. You know, you know, focus on. They're hungry, and that's how they get things done. Just, so, just the hunger, basically. <laughs> well said. Yes. Agreed. Junie, uh, when you were presenting your uh, your invention to uh, to the president, uh, you want to know a little bit more about uh, where your moment of inspiration came from. Can you can you tell us about that? Um, a moment of inspiration for creating my business, right? Yes. Um, well, in my a math class, someone walked in wearing a clip-on tie, and they didn't button the top of their button-up shirt, so when they wore the clip-on, it was really noticeable, since it doesn't have the rest of the strap, and it's kind of embarrassing to see that, so when I <laughs> was thinking in my business class, what could I create that someone would want to wear and could create something that's not exactly this thing I would have to go and search and have to learn how to create every single part, but that I could just modify something and turn it into something better. And that's where the inspiration for my business came from. I'm curious, how did you modify the back? Is it a Velcro strip? Um, actually, it's a buckle, and you just press it and it'll release. Easy. Good. Mm -hmm. Did you give President Obama a new tie? Um, excuse me? Did you give President Obama a new tie while you had him in your audience? Well, they said that I could not give him one, but he actually took it. So, yeah. <laughs> Let the record show these ties are irresistible. <laughs> I have a good uh, ad line. You could say, as worn by President Obama, or as owned, or as held by President Obama. <laughs> <laughs> Got a new trend. Well, yeah, we, we, you actually brought an example of your product, and we would be making a huge mistake if we didn't give you an opportunity to show it well, sure. uh, right now. Um, and also, uh, you know, I think you have a really interesting story too about what inspired you to create this product. Um, so these are my crutches that I decorated um, with the crutch accessories. Uh, last year I had to undergo four major foot surgeries and I was on crutches for almost three months. And I actually decorated them with my uh, crutch accessories and my duct tape. So then over the summer when I actually participated in the uh, started up St. Louis started up biz camp, um, I thought that this was a good idea for my business, and that's how I came up with it. Wow. Barbara, it matches your jacket. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's great about that product? It kind of falls in line with something that's very trendy here in New York. I don't know if it's elsewhere, but I see a lot of kids walking around with fluorescent colored casts on. Mm -hmm. So that must no, no more about this white cast where you sign. It's like so cool. i got to believe you could sell that product to the guy putting out the cast line. It falls into the same category. So hopefully when we expand and um, the sell sales of our crutches are great, that we will be able to expand to uh, making cast covers or um, cast or, or wheelchair covers or canes, things like that. Good. Damon, I mean, you, you've been through this, uh, you know, going from idea to worldwide uh, manufacturing supply chain. Do you have any, uh, uh, any advice uh, for Aaliyah at this stage in her development? Well, it, you know, just like any of the entrepreneurs, uh, you know, the one thing that entrepreneurs have in common is they take affordable next steps. I would say uh, 
you know, really go out and have a small amount of product and you sell it and you start to learn uh, what your customers will, uh, will take or not take. Um, I often also suggest don't go out and try to get funding immediately. Learn all the mistakes very, very small so that when you do get funding, it'll be a larger amount as well as you will be able to uh, make sure that the investor feels like you have everything and you're not learning any issues with on their money. So, uh, you know, so right now for expansion, it's even easier than when I started. When I started, I, I took a shirt and I sold it to you. I had to find you the next day to make sure you bought another shirt. I had to go to your house. Now, <laughs> with the internet, you know, with the internet and stuff, you know, you can go out there and you can, you can sell these products and or if you just have videos and things like that where people like it or view it, that's a form of, of, of a sale and then you can hopefully convert your customer later on. So basically, take affordable next steps. Don't try to go too quick and grow too quick and make sure you find a great mentor, somebody locally in your neighborhood. I always say that if it was somebody running a, a little fruit stand for the last 20 years, it's just as hard as running General Mills. They got to work all day, every single day. Find yourself a mentor. I have a question. Yeah, go for it. Um, I have a question for Damon. If I had a business where a lot of our sales are actually online, how do you suggest we go about selling those when you say we need to start small? Well, if, if online is where your sales are, that's amazing because, first of all, you have all your analytics of everybody. You have way more information than just a random sale. So you would just have to increase that online because maybe you don't want to go to traditional retail. I mean, traditional retail is somehow – you know, kind of a dinosaur now in, in many cases. Now, are you finding a way to aggregate these sales? Because you can, when you're an online salesperson, you can go out and get a small army to start helping you, and they get a small percentage of all the referrals they bring in. You can then go over to a factory or a manufacturer and say, hey, let me get 100 pre-orders, 200 pre-orders, 300 pre-orders, give it to you, you ship it to the person directly, and then we split up the money. This way you... You uh you keep your cash. You don't have to have heavy cash flow. You leave it on the side of the manufacturer. You just got a slice of what made Damon successful. He's a wheeler dealer. <laughs> <laughs> he knows how to expand on something. We have a question that came in on Twitter uh, that was for Jared. Uh, Jared, you mentioned uh, Betaversity, I think it's called, uh, which is this uh, maker space for colleges. So what kinds of projects, this is the question, uh, do Jared's friends get to work on at this innovation space? And I would add, how can other universities uh, uh, br bring, it, uh, bring it home? That is a, another great question. Um, there are a ton of projects that people work on. And what's so beautiful about it is it is a free space for students to bring their own ideas and projects to the table um, to recruit help from other talented individuals. For example, um, sometimes students work on industry-sponsored projects or uh, design for a cause. One of my friends recently designed a water pump for farmers in India uh, to replace high-cost diesel-powered uh, water pumps using uh, capillary physics um, to generate uh, water from a well and bring it up to the source. Other students work on fun projects such as uh, video games like Campus Cart, which is a, um, a live mapping of your college campus and you use an RC car to kind of drive around the levels that are made by you know your own environment. Um, and I actually made this. This is a um, mini MPC which is a, um, a music production tool which fits onto the back of most cellular phones uh, and can be um, you can export the files to your favorite music production software and make beats on the go. Um, for those who are interested in um, connecting with Betaversity or bringing an innovation space to campus, you can check out the website at betaversity.com. Um, or, um, as a student, there are many ways to bring an innovation space to your campus without necessarily having to go through um, an external party like Betaversity. So you, there's always the uh, opportunity to do it yourself, which is appropriate uh, if you're making a do-it-yourself space. Um, Absolutely. So I, I have a, a question uh, uh, back to our back to our two sharks, our two uh, serial entrepreneurs, Barbara Corcoran and Damon John. Um, you, you've talked a little bit about how 
you know, in some ways starting a company today uh, is a little different than when you got started. In some ways it's similar. But, but given how successful you've been uh, uh, and, and everything you're doing to give back, what advice would you have for every successful entrepreneur, uh, and what should they be doing to cultivate this next generation? This is to Damon. It's for both of you. Okay. Go ahead, Barb. You can start off. I'm a real gentleman in the crowd here. I love it. Okay. Um, I think probably the most important thing as an entrepreneur, if you're successful, is to give back. I think that's more easily said than done. Uh, some people are very good at teaching. Some people are good at opening their wallets, some people have both. I think what you have to do is once you're successful is figure out what suits you best. I'm most successful funding my family of many siblings and their college educations and their kids because education was not a big part of my family so that's my first priority giving back and then after that I of course accomplish what I can with the larger courses, of the larger causes. But I wanted to just say one, one thing uh, a lesson that you might know when you're young and remember the whole time you're building your business is that all the joy is not in hitting the jackpot. I sold my business for a ton of money and I thought it would be amazing when that day came. But guess what? All of my joy, my best memories, my biggest kicks in life came in the process of building the business. So you might be thinking you're running for a finish line down the road where things get better. The best is right under your nose right now with your creativity bubbling, you're hustling, you're worrying, you're trying to make ends meet. That's living life. Once you get the cash out, people think it's amazing. Let me tell you, I never met anyone who wasn't disappointed on cash day. Right? Nice to have, but all the joy is in the getting, and you got to squeeze every juice out of that all along the way, or you're missing the main deal. I, I have I have to agree with Barbara. You know, uh, you know. Always the cheese, agree with me, Damon. Yes, the cheese at the end of the maze is not always as tasty as running the maze, honestly, That's and. And as successful entrepreneurs, I think that it is our job and our duty to help pull other people up the ladder, and that works in good and bad ways. There's a lot of people out there who want to come up with ideas and concepts. They want their grandmother to cash in their 401k, but the people did not do their homework, and they have their whole entire family betting on them, and because, of, because they're lazy or because they have other ideas of what an entrepreneur is, they ruin everything for everybody. So there's one there's one uh, responsibility we have to be real with people and tell them when they're not doing well enough and they're not doing the right thing. And then the best part is when you find people who are amazing, people who are giving back. There's double bottom lines, triple bottom lines. They're not cared about making money necessarily. They're doing what they love, and the the ride is amazing. You know. I'm an only child, so the reason why I think I may be successful as an entrepreneur is I was so busy looking for friends that I decided to have to make everybody my partner. But to see us, you know, now over 40, and and my my partners and their friends and their families all are are in my industry and as sharing with others, it's really a good feeling to help other entrepreneurs uh, if you are fortunate enough to be successful. And I'm going to give you an alternate version of that because I'm one of 10 kids. And I believe one of the reasons I'm a successful entrepreneur is because I'm desperate for attention. That is, I just get a I'm always looking for attention. So whatever size family you're from, you know it all works. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that gets to something really deep and important, which is uh, we can't really predict who's going to be a great entrepreneur. Uh, you know, we have Barbara and, and Damon. Uh, you know, attribute their success to completely different things. Um, and so, uh, you know, before we close, I, I wanted to turn back to our, our high school, uh, college, and grad school entrepreneurs who have all, you know, already done extraordinary things and have incredibly bright futures ahead of you. Um, we're probably being watched right now by, uh, by students of all ages who are maybe thinking about uh, trying to start something on their own, trying to fulfill a need uh, out there that they see that nobody else has seen yet. So we started with a lightning round. We're going to end with a lightning round. Uh, I'm just going to go around. If you have just real quick... What is the most important advice you can give to other students who are thinking about embarking on their entrepreneurial journey? And we'll start with Aliyah. Okay, um, if I were to give out advice, I would say that you should follow your dreams and uh, pursue your passion and just go for it. Do your best, give it your all, and I'm sure you'll get a great outcome. Jesus. Uh, definitely never underestimate your idea. Never believe or doubt it. If you put effort into it and you stick with it, you could go very, very far. So just never, never think it, it can't happen. To you? For me, it would be find what you like 
and um, then do it and do it really well. Um, we like soccer, we play soccer. Soccer is us, and we do that very well. Therefore, we are TNA soccer. <laughs> well, I'm just going to piggyback off him. I would say do what you love, because if you really love it, you will never give up. You will accomplish whatever you want and overcome all those challenges. So, yeah. Jeremy. I'd say um, never let anyone else bring your idea down. If you have the confidence in your idea, no one else can ruin that. Thank you. And now let's go to Jenny Corbin. Uh, biggest piece of advice is to surround yourself with people that are smarter than you, uh, people that can give you the advice that you need. And remember, you are not the smartest person in the room, but you can hire someone to be that person. <laughs> Great. Jared. Uh, my favorite piece of advice is to be relentless. Don't take no for an answer. And when you get no for an answer, Learn why you got no for an answer, and then go around that person and get a yes from the next guy or girl. All right. Spencer? Um, when it comes to starting new businesses, I'd say uh, my policy is fail fast. And kind of going off of what uh, Damon said, like make an assumption and look for a way to validate that there is a demand or that it's an idea that can really become a business and just pivot based off what you find. So don't be afraid to change. I mean, to me, the difference between successful and unsuccessful entrepreneurs is just those who are willing to change and those who not. So who aren't? So just be willing to work real hard. Thanks. And your life, bring us home. Um, I'd say my piece of advice is to do everything that all these people have said, but then uh, also sort of surround yourself with people who aren't entrepreneurs and who are just normal friends that will tell you to take a break and that there's other things in the world that are important. <laughs> that is fantastic. That is extremely sage advice from a lot of people who know what they're talking about. Uh, so I want to thank everyone again uh, uh, here at the White House and out there online for participating in today's installment of We the Geeks on student startups. Uh, for those of you who want to learn more about the President's call to action around entrepreneurship, just check out whitehouse.gov slash startupamerica. And if you have any other ideas for future themes in science, technology, and innovation, uh, tweet them to us. Again, the hashtag is WeTheGeeks. Uh, so again, happy National Entrepreneurs Day across the United States. Happy Global Entrepreneurship Week around the world. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.